Hi. Hey, this is Amy, Amy Hepworth. Isabel. And um, we're from Hepworth Farms. And Isabel is here from France and she's been helping with the compost pile. Now here we are. Here we have farm waste that is dedicated to composting, recycling the products that are not marketable. So these, can you see the product there, David? Okay, so here we have eggplant and various different vegetables that didn't make it to market. So in the process, in the field so from the field we harvest we bring it in and we grade it we grade it extra fancy for the for the most markets then we have a second grade for the markets that'll buy at a discounted price in perfects and then we have the food bank that comes and takes what others really don't want and process it to feed people. And then we have another food pantry that comes with what the food pantry doesn't want and will recycle even more. And then we bring it to compost. The other people, we have different neighborhood people that come and glean from the, uh, where it comes out of our packing area into the compost area, they'll come and take for their home use. And we have some restaurants that also come and use it for certain processing. So fortunate for us, we get like three or four steps to before it reaches where we bring it into what we call compost, which will be returned back to the land and increase fertility. And how we do that is um, we start with the raw material and we also have, this is be, would be more high nitrogen material, high nitrogen material. And we'll get into ratios later as needed. And then we have carbon material, which are wood chips. So in order to create the compost, we need to mix carbon and nitrogen in a certain ratio. It can be as low as 15 to 1 up to 60 to 1 depending on what we're doing and what we're mixing but uh, Isabel will talk more about that and um, so how we do it is we start by making sure it comes in and then we get it mixed up what we're going to do here next is get the piles to the correct size where they get the right amount of height 6 feet by 9 feet and in a, in, a, in a shape that gives the most amount of potential to aeration and infiltration of water and mixing. We want this to be a really nice mix in about 50 to one carbon to nitrogen, somewhere in there, 30 to one. There's a lot of different formulas that we work with or depending on what material we have, but we're basically mixing. And so right now the piles are too big because we're just trying to get everything mixed up. And then what we're gonna come do now is we take the carbon, which are wood chips, the, the raw vegetable matter, and then we take some finished compost, which I don't know if you can see in the far distance, try over there. Can you see the black? Uh, that's the m m last season and a mixture of a finished compost that's going through its final stages. And then we bring 10% or more or less into the mix. So now we're gonna come in, we'll mix this up one more time, we'll bring in the carbon, we'll mix this up, and then we're going to create the piles. We'll split this pile in two so that it has a height of about six, a width of about nine feet. And inside that we'll have a nice area where it can get heated up. The process of decomposition is going to happen in a zone and the air will be able to get to it in order to increase the potential for decomposition. Um, and uh, Isabel, what would, you, what, do you, what would you like to help people understand in the process of what is compost and what, how, how 
what's your perspective it's big it's a big it's a big conversation it's a big uh, yeah it's a big question um, well uh, everything is a question of feeding and maybe the compost is there to feed the soil to help all the microorganism um, as well as uh, all the fauna uh, to come and uh, um, give the food to this fauna that's gonna aerate more the soil and gives a knees for the roots uh, to make their way more much easier and go deeper getting all the um, atoms we need for our good health so the compost is a uh, human made uh, complex material uh, that is trying to copy what is best to be done in the forest. Uh, we need carbon more in our fields. Um, there's a great deficit for, for years of it. So we tend here to do high ratio on the nitrogen carbon to, from 1 to 30 to 1 to 60 even, um, because that's gonna be um, a longer term feeding process for the soil is going to be longer to to be digested um, the wood chips is um, the big key it will stay long and uh, it's going to be colonized by the mushrooms those mushrooms uh, will decompose the wood chips and especially the linen inside uh, which are very difficult to digest to any other organism and those mushrooms will give food to other fauna um, the compost decomposition of it all will give food to uh, microorganism bacteria fungus algae is that the way you yeah and um, and all this uh, will put back to the soil to be integrated and feed the soil that will be able to feed um, the next plant coming okay to um I think we're trying today we're just trying to have people understand about waste and it's really a funny thing because yes there's um, all kinds of things that are out there that in the natural world that are going to be attacking in this kind of environment it's been a very particularly wet environment it's rained the last three days we have over five inches of rain so these are high pathogen potentials to infect plants with diseases that can destroy the crop or mark them. So um, waste can start in the field by fields dying, unable to even harvest, to the point where you fight all kinds of ways, uh, hydrogen peroxide or protection or plant immune um, boosting techniques through biologicals. So we're in this very deep path to understand crop protection through biology. And it's come with a lot of success in a year like this. Um, and, but you do have crop failures and you have to be realistic about it. And so there is waste. One of the things I think about waste is I think that Yes, on the farm, because we're the producers, of course there's farm waste, and especially with this, with a, you know, we have a standard out there of buying, going into the supermarket and buying perfect fruit and vegetables. So that is what's going to, you know, drive. And it's the consumer's so used to it that, you know, that's what we're gonna pay a premium for. And also the USDA also ensures through their regulatory and guidelines for standards uh, mandates certain things not get into the food supply, whether it's an insect or a scale or a aphid or they don't want to see insects in, in the food. So, and disease and decay and pathogens are also unacceptable. So that's what starts the whole standardization of clean fruits and vegetables and it's of course it's changed over the centuries and now we have a very high standard 
which is um, hence more food waste potentially not marketed in mainstream due to marks they could be cosmetic marks they'll still not be sold as you know uh, extra fancy what you see in the supermarket um, I always like to turn it around a little bit to understand what is wasteful well one there's so many different things that we do individually that we need to be conscious of it's not just farming it's always easy to think about and if you if you're not a farmer and you don't understand it on a very deep level by through experience and you're really a, a degree closer to a farm and understanding what goes on you know we can always do it in our own lives you know it's a kind of a deep subject matter you know how much toothpaste do you really need to brush your teeth because you might be wasting toothpaste every time you brush your teeth um, that could happen in the bathroom it can happen in the shower with shampoo it can happen is it necessary to use all the the cosmetics because you have to remember everything that we do and everything we consume whether it's food or makeup or um, is contributing to overall consumption and raw materials being used so we have to just be mindful in everything that we're doing how many times we need to do any certain thing or how long we're going to run the water you know all these things are all a part of waste so it's not just here at the farm where food is you know being recycled the good thing is that we recycle the waste i'm very really the amount of compost we put back into the earth is is awesome so i just like to turn it around to you guys and make sure that we're all understanding that it's a it's a big issue for the whole planet planet and that we all can partake in many little ways and in diff and differently in all different ways. Um, does anybody have any questions? <laughs> okay. Well, we'll keep at this. Uh, Mike, would, do you want me to talk more about various subject matters around compost? We're going to um, put some compost out on the field. As these fields break down, we'll um, compost in the fall compost in the spring we have a dynamic that we use cover crops so in the case of the cover crops we like the plant material the plants to grow for the soil now we seed the cover crops when the plants are finished and those plants will feed different um, will just be used for the soil we don't harvest the plants we just mow it and till it back in, and there's a variety of different um, cover crops we use in that situation. <laughs> um, also, and then in composting, it's just a real big um, chore to get the compost on the piles. I mean, compost in the fields. So we have a big job today because we have to break this pile into two piles, and we're going to. Oh, the work. grapes come in. Um, in order to keep increasing the fertility of our soils. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>